All right, y'all, what's going on? It's Combo Breaker 99 back with another video. All right, y'all, so I did my video asking what Alexa Grasso is capable of doing at this point in her career. But let's take a look at the recrowned champion, Valentina Shevchenko. This is the one I've been thinking about this past week. Now that Valentina got the belt back, the fanboys are going nuts. Both Valentina fanboys and Alexa fanboys kind of going at it. But the Bullet Boys, the Bullet Boys, they think this is it. And they think she's back and ready to run the division once again. Okay. She did get the belt back, but even after watching the Alexa Grasso fight and how long it took her to get it back, there's a few questions that I have to ask. There's still questions that run through my mind. The fashion that she done it in, okay, it was dominant, 50-45 across the board, all right. But we all know this was a fight Valentina had to jump back to basics on and stay on Grasso in that fight because Grasso was still an opponent that posed a bigger threat than anybody in the flyweight division. So now that we've seen Grasso, we know that we have more fighters in the division that are ready, equipped, and hungry to do the same thing. So we have to wonder, we have to ask ourselves, are we going to see a second reign of Valentina Shevchenko? I know seeing Valentina back in action made a lot of people think she's ready. And she's, she, you know, she's ready to do it again against any flyweight. And yeah, I admit she looked like the old Valentina. Not an old Valentina, but the old Valentina because this is how I expected the first fight to go with Grasso. I expected Valentina to go in there, take her down, maul her, and eventually stop Grasso. You know, that's how I saw the first fight going. But it took her three fights to do that. You know, again, she had to take it back to basics. But think about it. it took her three fights to get it back from Grasso. She really had to figure out what type of style was going to work to own Grasso in there this time around. You know, she got taken out of her comfort zone. So just like any division, when a champ starts to lose it, somebody else out there is watching. You know, they're already kind of building up their own blueprint. So when I think of another rain right now, it really is hard to say yes. I mean, I can see the possibility, but I really lean more towards no right now, which I go through that last. Real quick, I want to go through the points and why I feel like it is possible. I can't really say yes, but I think there is a possibility. Well, number one, there's a possibility Valentina could go through a second rain is because of her experience, all right? She's got more experience than anybody in the flyweight division. You know, she's seen it all, been through it all. She's been through the pressure, the losses now, you know, the hard loss that she suffered from Grasso. She learned how to bounce back from that mentally. She knows how to approach the title defense. You know, some of these fighters, they've won belts, but haven't really learned how to defend them. You know, some of these fighters won belts on the regional scene. They, had, they haven't really defended them, you know, so Valentina, She's defended it on a high level, so she knows how to win a belt and how to keep it and how to pace herself in a fight. So I really think it just is, is going to depend on how these contenders react to Valentina. You know, most can't just go in there and, and freeze up. You know, they got to go in there and dictate the pace of the fight and not over-respect Valentina. So if Valentina coming in with that experience, you know, she's already going to know, for the most part, what her opponent is going to bring to the table. Most of the time now, they do, you know. Fighters like her, you know, it's almost second nature to them now where they can just go in there and figure out what their opponent's going to do and kind of run from there. But again, you know, this next crop of flyweights, they're just a little bit different, which I'll go through in a minute here. But I think a lot of these fighters now that are going to come up, they know how to counter that experience. But, you know, again, Valentina possessing all this experience, you know, being she's been part of the Bantamweight division, the flyweight division, face fighters like Holly Holm and Nunes. You know, I think. She knows what she's up against. I think she does. But the question is, does she have enough to go up against these fighters? Which brings me to her tools. You know, that's the second thing I'll say that a possible second ring could be on the horizon because, you know, she has a number of tools. You know, Valentina, I know she's known as a counter striker and a Muay Thai fighter. But throughout the years, you know, she's always had some other uh, tool to jump into. You know, she's good, at, you know, good on the ground, jujitsu, grappling all together. You know, she knows how to go for position or submission. You know, she has all kinds of victories on her record where you can say, OK, this is a well-rounded fighter. You know, she stopped people on the feet, stopped people on the ground, submitted people. You know, she's done a little bit of everything. So, you know, Valentina always has something to go to. I know some tools she doesn't use as much, which is what could cost her in the future. But for the most part, you know, she knows how to uh, make that right adjustment in a fight. So, yeah, tools are something that Valentina has that she can always go to. You know, she's never been a one-dimensional fighter again you know she's always been that counter striker always had that counter counter stand-up type of style but for the most part you know she's um she's well-rounded 
You know, in the past, you've seen these other fighters might have grabbed the belt once. Jessica Andrade can't get it back because, you know, they're one dimensional. You know, they don't really have anything else to fall back on or they don't really work on new things in fights. Like, again, with Jessica Andrade, like, you know, she's physically strong, had a few submissions early in her career, but she never really revisits the ground much. So her grappling is never really like advanced. So she just become known as a puncher and people learn how to figure out. You know, Valentina, though, you know, she's known to switch it up more. So, you know, she has more uh, tools to go to and, you know, she'll find more ways to win. So, yeah, tools are definitely a big thing. Um, the third thing I'll say with Valentina is, you know, Valentina is still Valentina and still, you know, and still, you know, Valentina still looks like Valentina. You know, she still has her wits about her. You know, she still has that freshness about her. She still has that hunger, it appears. She has that she just has that enthusiasm about her you know she still has that love of the sport and i think having that love of the sport and having fun in there and enjoying what you do is going to be a big key especially for valentina as a champion most of these most of these fighters you know they can't get the belt back because they just don't have that hunger you know they're not the same fighter but see valentina came back after a long reign you know, lost it and she was able to get it back, proving that, you know, she still has something to prove. So that still is a big thing. You know, having all those all, having all those keys are what makes it possible <laughs> for her to go in a second reign. I still say possible. All right. So, yeah, those are the three things I would say maybe we get it back for Valentina on a dominant reign. But in all honesty, I lean more towards probably not. Sadly, I really lean towards probably not right now because you got to remember, we've been discussing over here the fighters now. I mean, number one, the threat list, you know, the triple threat list, quadruple threat list is still in effect, whatever you want to call it. You know, um, Grasso wasn't on my threat list as somebody that was going to, you know, go up there and eventually get the belt from Valentina. But Santos was. I remember Tyler Santos, you know, she was the one that kind of started off the train of making Valentina look vulnerable, you know, so. You know, we we, we got to look at it. You know, we got to look down the list. Who else is next? You know, there's Manon. You know, Manon is always one of the fighters I said would get up to the top. And you got a top five overall that each of these fighters have been on nice win streaks or still on nice win streaks. You know, these fighters are looking special compared to the last crop Shevchenko dominated. You know, just going down the list again, you know, Tyler, when she was here, you know, she was one of the first. Alexa Grasso did it. Uh, Manon, you know, she's on a nice 7-0. 7 and 0 UFC win streak right now. Uh, she's next in line. You know, Aaron just suffered a loss, but she's still young and can grow. Now you got Rose in the division, right? Natalia Silva's on like a 6 and 0 win streak. So all of these fighters are looking so much more different and so much more special than the first fighters that Shevchenko fought. So, yeah, like looking at this list here, there's somebody in this list that's going to stop Valentina from going on that dominant reign. Or even if she was a win, they're going to expose her at some point again and making her look vulnerable. Or, you know, they're just going to have that hunger to kind of shut whatever it is that Valentina is going to have down in the fight. You know, um, next thing you have to look at, these, these fighters are well-rounded. You know, these ladies, they're covering every ground now, striking, grappling, everything. But the shocking part is the majority of the top six are strikers. You know, they're literally more into their stand-up game. Um Aaron being the only one not as polished on the feet, but fighters like Manon, Rose, or Natalia Silva, these fighters are different. So a few of these fighters are guaranteed to give Valentina some problems. I know we're going to say, okay, Valentina, no, she's the pure striker. You know, she's the Muay Thai fighter here. But look what Grasso did. You know, Grasso, who's known more as a boxer, was able to use those boxing fundamentals to, to frustrate Valentina and catch her in ways that she's never been caught before. So... Going back and looking at Valentina's reign, she's never faced this many solid strikers in her first reign. You know, she's never faced this many solid strikers in a row. Jessica, I, okay, she's a boxer, but, you know, she's never really been known as somebody who's a threat or gone on like a win streak herself with her boxing style. Lauren Murphy, not a boxer, not a pure boxer. Andrade, a puncher, no. Chikagin's probably the only one, but again, she didn't really possess that physical strength or, you know, a variety of tools to really frustrate Valentina or do anything to hurt Valentina. Um, Maya was probably the closest one. Maya's the only one that really gave Valentina somewhat of a competitive fight. 
But even then, she didn't really have that pop or hurt to get Valentina's respect or really put Valentina on notice. So looking at that, yeah, like all of these fighters are dedicated strikers. So they're going to have something as far as timing or power or, you know, precision to hurt Valentina. I think at some point, you know, so just looking at it again, Rose, Manone, Natalia, uh, 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 Grasso again, like if Grasso was able to get back to that point, you know, all of these fighters are stand up fighters, you know, so they'll make adjustments and they'll find a way to get to Valentina. You know, she's really going to have to be on her game here. But I just think these fighters are so different now and committed to that striking. But again, well-rounded that they'll give her problems. They will. You know, I'm just telling you right now, you know, again, you know, like fighters like Manon, she likes to fight strikers at their own game. Sometimes, you know, she beat your keg and it was a close fight, but she wanted to prove her striking was better. You know, that stands for some. She wanted to prove she was a better striker than Rose. She'll probably do that again to Man Man uh, Valentina. You know, Valentina, she'll probably say, OK, you know, I want to prove I'm the better striker. So she's going to come in there with sharp eyes and sharp hands ready to go. You know, Um Another thing is there's just so much more footage of Valentina now that these fighters can study more footage. Uh, more footage means more game plans and more weaknesses to study. You know, they're, they're going to be watching. They're going to watch all three Grasso fights. They're going to watch the Nunez fights, everything, even the fights that she's winning. You know, these fighters, they can study her and come up with a game plan. You know, um, that's that's the one thing I said on how you beat Valentina before. You know, you got to study her, stalk her live and breathe just valentina you know if you're next in line watch her watch her watch what she's doing watch what she does wrong wh what she doesn't like what she likes to do she like to fight off the back foot more whatever you know how does she react when you punch her you know when she does get hit clean um so yeah just stuff like that and i think this next crop of flyweights you know they they just have a little bit more of a lack of respect for her, you know which is good like they respect her as a champion but you got to have that lack of respect not like calling her names or you know disrespecting her legacy or anything like her family or stuff like that but you have that lack of respect when you get in there like you can't be starstruck you know i believe these fighters see valentina as just another fighter now where they're like okay she's a stepping stone but well, not stepping stone but you know she's in my she's got something i want she's got something i want so i'm gonna do whatever it takes and that's how you gotta do grasso had that approach everybody you know everybody's got that approach you know like i said no name calling her stupid stuff like that but fighters like Manon feel they're gonna say look i've been working hard i want that bill i'm just look i worked hard just just as hard as you and i'm better than you you know so that's how you got to approach a fight respect her when you're in there as far as what she's able to do but i always say i'm better than you um again a lot of tools valentina has a lot of tools but some of these girls some of these girls i think they can bring something new and just make it uncomfortable you know santos did it with the grappling you know couldn't fully capitalize, but hey, she was one of those fighters that started to make Valentina look vulnerable on the ground. Grasso, you know, she did it with her stand up, couldn't wrestle, but snuck in with the jujitsu. Manone, she could do it with her stand up. You know, Manone is big, she's strong. Manone has great takedown defense. Manone could probably outstrike her and out time her with her technique. And then if Valentina tries to go to that bag and wrestle, Manone is big enough and strong enough to stop these takedowns. You know, so these fighters, they have something. They all have something. Um, Valentina might see her kryptonite in, in Manon. She might see it in Aaron at some point. Aaron might make it interesting. Aaron's a jujitsu practitioner. So if you come in there trying to control on the ground, Aaron's going to be comfortable with it if she beats Rose now. You know, if she finds her way back up there. And then Rose. You know, Rose, I know before we thought Rose might get lit up by Valentina. But now you got to think, look, Rose is growing into this division. She's physically strong. She looks good. She looks sharp. She's hungry now. And Rose knows Valentina. You know, she trains with her, you know, so she's trained with her in the past. So, you know, Rose probably know, probably sat in the back and said, all right, you know, I know some things about her. I ain't going to say it out loud, but I know some things that make her uncomfortable. And she's probably just waiting for that opportunity, opportunity to expose them when she's in a title fight. So, again, that's a, that's something she has to look at. So all of these fighters at the top right now, in the top six, they, they, they're going to be a task. And. I just can't see Valentina going through and running through running through these fighters right now. I think their their skill sets on the feet are going to match her at some point, and that's going to be a problem because she hasn't faced this many strikers in a row. She's going to have to be able to adjust on the fly. If you look at her fights in the past, she's always been able to 
get get into her comfort zone and do what she's wanted and made her fight succumb to what she wants to do. So yeah, um, and then and then last but not least, this the big one. This the big one that's probably going to stop her from a second reign right now at 36, 37, right? Father Time. You know, Father Time is undefeated. You know, the next fight could be the fight where she's off. You know, she looked good in the last one, but this could be the fight where, you know, she's off. Her reflexes might be off. Timing could be off. And you never know. One shot could put her down. You know, punch resistance might have gone down or something like that. You know, the hunger might not just be there. It might just feel like, oh, I'm feeling sluggish and weak. So that age, it can kick in and fight. We just, just never know when. So, that's one of the things that could stop that rain, man. And, you know, at 36, 37, it, it's, um, it's prowling. It's prowling around at that point. So, yeah, I think, again, like I said, I lean more towards not possible for all of those reasons. At most, this time around for Valentina Shevchenko, I could say two defenses, maybe three at most now. I think each fight, someone's going to figure her out. You know, somebody's going to figure their own little weakness out in her. And they'll be ready to jump on her. You know, out of this crop of tough fighters, it'll be a mix. It'll be a mix. You know, and as age progresses, her slowing down, whether it's speed or reaction time, momentum, whatever. I think, you know, there's there's gonna be somebody again in this crop that's gonna that's gonna stop her and or just beat her. And it could very much well be Manon, which I'll talk about in a separate video on why I feel like Manon Fior has enough to do it. And yeah, man. So yeah, I was just here to kind of look at both sides. You know, like I say, I ain't, I ain't being a fanboy. I'm a fan of the fight game first. I'm a fan of the fight game first. Like I said, I give Valentina a possibility because of her experience and tools and everything. But I'm gonna be real, man. I'm gonna be real. A second reign would be legendary for Valentina, and I know her hardcore fans, of course. But for us, you know, that that have been watching the game like me, you know, from long time now since the flyweight division started. I can say, you know, this crop here is different, you know, and if they if someone was right to, able to ride, if someone was able to rise to the occasion again and beat her and take the belt, it would pay off more. It would pay off in a growing division. You know, uh, it would be dis disappointing, I know, for, you know, the hardcore fans and even, you know, like I said, fans of Van Valentina's work ethic like myself I hate to see her just fall like that. But, you know, personally, I would like to see the belt go to a fighter like Manon Fior, you know, win it, hold it see if she could move up then and you know just kind of build her own legacy you know again that's not being a fanboy i just like to see some new things happen you know that that means that the division is getting better and fighters are getting better right so yeah that's pretty much all i had to say on that one guys but uh let me know in the comment section what y'all think do y'all think a second reign of valentina shevchenko is on the horizon after winning the belt from grasso is she going to be able to Go in here and dominate Manon and then beat maybe the winner of Aaron Rose and then beat Natalia Silva and just keep beating fighters like Corrine and Lipsky or who Macy, whoever. Do you think she has enough to beat this new crop of flyweights again that are much well rounded than the last few fighters that she's beaten that possess high striking IQs? Think about that. Think about that. Think about it while y'all hit that like button and subscribe, guys. This is Combo Breaker 99 WMMA Talk. I am out. Peace.